Yo, welcome back to 40 TV. I'm your host, 40. So guys, I don't know if you know it or not, but I am back learning Cinema 4D and X Particles and more all in 3D. And, you know, I, it's not that I don't know 3D. It's that I've never been an expert and I've decided, hey, it's time to change that, right? So I've been studying and I thought, you know what? I'm going to make tutorials showing you how to do certain things in Cinema 4D. Number one, it will help me practice. Number two, you'll learn some stuff. So let's get started. So today, what I want to do is create a honeycomb-like pattern using X particles in Cinema 4D. So the first thing we're going to do, and by the way, if you don't have X particles, obviously you won't be able to follow along in this tutorial. However, uh, Insidium, the company that makes X particles, is offering a three-month trial due to COVID. So go ahead and get your three-month trial and start working on it. So inside X particles, uh, you go ahead and you add an XP system. When you do that, it adds all these other options, and the only real thing that's there is the emitter. If we press play, you'll see it's emitting particles already. So that's pretty cool. We want these particles to emit, but we we want them to have trails, right? So I'm going to go ahead and up here in the XP system, I will select generators and objects. And if I scroll down, because it's going to create a menu where you probably, yeah, you can't see the XP trail. It's the last item on the list right underneath Sprite. When I click this, you'll notice it added XP trail here and it is linked to the XP emitter that we have here, right? It does that because you're adding it through the system. Now, if I rewind and I play, we're making particles with trails. If I press Command R and we render, we see nothing, right? And that's okay. That's because we need to add a material. Let's go ahead and click on Create. We'll come over here to Shader, and down at the last option is X Particles Material. It comes up with this funky green uh, color. I'll go ahead and press Spacebar. I'll uh, stop it. I always press Spacebar to stop the playback. <laughs> I'll press Command R to go ahead and render it, and it's not showing anything because we haven't applied it to the trail. Let's go ahead and render now, and we've got these green lines. The green is not for me in this particular example, so let's come over here to color. We're going to go to particular color and select single color. We'll make it mm, something like this red. The other thing that we should do is come over here to size, and we want to click the age box. And with this gradient right here, what it's saying is as the particle gets older, it's going to diminish in size. If you wanted to reverse that, you could switch the black and white uh, color swatches here, etc. I'll go ahead and close this out. I'll re-render. And now you'll see as the particle gets older, you see how it's getting uh, smaller uh, or trailing off in the color, right? To become uh, transparent. Next thing we want to do is we probably want to drop things down. But first, let's go up to XP system and we will select motion modifiers right here. And we are going to go to XP network. And what XP network does is it creates like a network, right? Best way to show you is rewind, press play, boom. It's creating like this almost computer network. If we, we press command R, that's a lot of stuff going on. So we should probably drop the amount of particles being emitted from our emitter. So I'll click on the emitter right here. I'll come over here to emission and I'm gonna change the rate, the emission mode from rate to pulse. I'm gonna change the length from one frame uh, every 30 frames to one frame every two frames. And I'm gonna change the birth rate to one from 1000. Next, I will change the variation to one. And then, whoops, I wanna also, I wanna come back over here to object and I wanna uncheck offset XY. When I do that, it means that it's going to go below uh, the X, Y, the, the Y plane, and that's what we want to do. We're also going to change this to Y plus, and then we're going to rewind. We're going to press play, and boom, it is starting to create a network for us, right? The next thing that we want to do is come over here to the network, and we want to make a few changes. To get that honeycomb pattern, what we want to do is make the, angle, uh, the change angle heading to 60 degrees and drop everything else, right? And now if I rewind to the beginning, I press play, boom, we're getting that sexy honeycomb pattern. huh? So again, uh, let's give ourselves some more time. We're going to increase this from 90 frames to 150. We're going to drag this out so we see the whole timeline. We'll go back to the beginning. We'll press play, and we will get that honeycomb in view. I'm going to pause it. I'm going to press 3 on my number pad, and I'm going to rotate around so it is in our viewport. I'll press Command R to render what we're looking at, and boom, that's starting to look very sexy. I want to show you two other things before we call it a day. The first thing in this XP network, if we go over to mapping, we can add some mapping. And what we could do is we can tell it that as this gets older, I want you to create smaller particles, right? And so right now, it's actually going to do the opposite. It's going to create small particles and then big ones. If we rewind, 
will play super small and then they get bigger. We want the uh, reverse of that. To reverse this, we're gonna come over here, we're gonna right click and we're gonna click on flip horizontal. You don't see it on the screen, but that's the option. Huh? And see here it says, I want you to change as the egg gets older and that's what I'm, uh, and I wanted you to change from this spline right here, right? So let me rewind, I'll show you what this looks like. And so now we've got this honeycomb that then makes smaller honeycombs as it gets older and it's really getting funky, huh? We can then re, uh, reposition position this by pressing two on my keyboard. Alternatively, all these options here, you can get to this option by pressing one on your number pad, this option number two, this option number three, and clicking with your mouse. Or you could just click here and move or press one on your, your number pad and your mouse, right? Simple navigation. Anyway, so we've done that. Up to you whether you wanna use that or not. But what if we want, instead of right now in the emitter, the emitter is being born from this rectangle, right? So if I come back and I press, it's all coming from a small rectangle right here. I can change the size of this emitter, right? You see? And it's on the floor there, huh? And I can then go ahead and press play. It's not changing this very much by changing the emitter like that. Again, we can come over here uh, to our inspector. We can right click to reset these values. And what we could try to do is instead of emitting from a rectangular shape, why don't we emit from a sphere? So in order to do that, I'm going to create a sphere. After I create this sphere, I'm going to increase the size. I did that by selecting the scale property here. Alternatively, I could have pressed the, uh, the T on my keyboard to bring up transform and then click and drag because this is a sphere where we're increasing the size uniformly. Then I can come over here to my uh, sphere. I could click on tags, go to Cinema 4D tags and select display tags or display tag. In the display tag, I'll select use, I'll change it from garage shading to lines, and now I could just see the sphere, but it's not so much, it's not so cumbersome, right? Next, what I'm gonna do is go to the emitter, I'm gonna change my object type from rectangle to object, and when I do that, I need to drag the sphere into the object selection right here. Let me rewind and show you this incredibly different pattern we're gonna get, because what's gonna happen is the emitter is gonna emit from all the different parts around the sphere. I'll go ahead and press play, now, if I press Command R on my keyboard, right, what's gonna happen is you're gonna see this ugly sphere, right? So in order to get rid of that, we can come over here and we can turn this off by turning these two stoplights to red. I'll then rewind, I'll press play, and you'll notice at the center of that sphere, not too much stuff is being born, huh? Because everything is bo being born from the points on the outside, the polygon centers. Right? I'll press Command R and look at this new funky pattern that we're getting. Right? Obviously, you can play with this, the size of the sphere, etc. I'm going to delete the sphere because I like the way it looked without. I'll rewind to the beginning and make sure that our uh, emitter, see when we did that, we didn't change from object back to rectangle. You want to do that, rewind to the beginning, press play. We're going to get this to 150 frames. We're going to stop it. Well, or we're going to try to stop it at 150 frames, right? Now, here's another thing. Once we do this, of course, I keep missing the 150, so I'm not even going to do We'll stop it a little bit sooner than that, right? And we're going to render it here. What if you like this, but you want to change it a bit, right? We can go over to the emission, and we can scroll down. Actually, what we're looking for is the, uh, the seed, right? It's right here under advanced. If we change this by a number, it, just, it could just be one number. We go back to the beginning. We're going to get an entirely different pattern, huh? So I'll go ahead and stop this now. Super cool. Guys, I hope you like this tutorial. You found it informative. Um, if you have any questions, leave it in the comments. I'll do my best to answer. Like I said, I'm teaching myself 3D. It includes Cinema 4D. It includes Mocha. It includes, anyway, it includes a lot of stuff. I know some of these things already. However, I'm trying to take my skills to the next level. Thanks a lot for watching. Please share the video with your friends. Like, subscribe. Till next time, I'm out.